All right, guys, how's it going? Welcome back. Well, today you join me as I go to pick up a Honda Civic that I bought for just £500. I don't know much about it, apart from the fact that the salesman who took this car in part exchange told me that it was all right. Now, here in Manchester, all right can either mean the best thing ever or so-so. You hear this kind of thing all the time. For example, all right, pal, how was your honeymoon? Didn't you go to the Maldives and stay in one of those villas on stilts in the water? Yeah, I did, yeah. How was it? It was all right. Or... I'm really sorry to hear about your dad. How did the funeral go? It was all right, thanks for asking. So I really don't know what all right means. This could be the nicest Honda Civic you'll ever see, or it could be fit for the scrapyard. Who knows? I suppose we will shortly, won't we? One thing I do know is that it's a 2005, so that's the last of the old shape. You can tell that by these keys, it's got a separate fob for the alarm. I think the new shape Honda Civic, the one that looks like Darth Vader's helmet, I think that came out in 06. I think this definitely then, or definitely maybe, is the old shape. And I've always liked that old shape Civic. They felt solid and they were quite nice to drive. I remember a good few years ago, this will show my age now, but do you remember when tax discs were stuck in the windows of cars and you could actually transfer the tax? So if you bought a car and had a few months tax remaining on it, it was still legal barring insurance of course. Well a good few years ago I took one of these Civics in part exchange and it had a few months tax remaining on it so I just ran it for about six weeks or so. It was in that pale wishy-washy green colour almost like a Givenchy green from Land Rover but it was the exec I think they called it so it had leather seats and all that sort of stuff. It's a really nice car. I'm praying now this one's half as nice as the one I'm talking about that I had seven, eight, nine years ago. We'll soon find out won't we? Right I'll catch up with you when we're there. Right, well, we're here, and it looks all right. It's in quite a nice colour. Is it space grey? Might have made that up, I'm not sure. It's 1.6. The bodywork looks, mm, there's a little bit of a crease in the rear door, but for 500 pounds, it's not too bad. Bit of a mark there on the rear bumper. You know, what's funny, I've been in this job so long, I'm always suspicious. So the fact that that's been driven into the space rather than reversed in, makes me think there's probably something wrong with the front end, but we'll go and have a look. But first, let me do a vehicle history check. So, as always, I'm going to use Car Vertical. This will tell us a bit more about the car. So all you need to do is go to carvertical.com, type in the vehicle reg, which in this case is Charlie X-Ray 05, Welsh car, Foxtrot Golf Echo. If you click the link below in the video description and use the promo code HIGHPEAK, you'll get 10% off each and every vehicle check that you do. And it's really important that you do this before you buy a used car. Because lots of used cars have got skeletons in the closet. But by doing a check like this, it just means that you go into a purchase with your eyes open. I need to hurry up with this because it looks like the heavens are about to open. Right, and the report's ready. So let's view report. Oh, that's interesting. Right, so it's telling us straight away that the mileage of this vehicle may have been tampered with, but it's never been stolen, never been involved in any accidents, there's no outstanding finance on it. It was manufactured in January 2005 and registered in the UK in April 05. It's had a private plate. Let's see if there's any MOT on it. It shows you all the previous MOT history. Oh, well, that's good news. So, it passed its MOT in June 2022, this year, so only a few months ago, and it advised a nail in the rear tyre, headlamp intensity severely reduced, back box corroded, and exhaust has major leak of exhaust gases. Ah, right, no, they weren't advisories. They were fails. So it's failed on those things, and then it's passed with no advisories. So I'm guessing those have all been done. So that's good news. Let's have a look at this mileage then and see what went to miss. At the last MOT it done 86,000 miles, 85 before that, 85, 83, 83. Oh, okay, right. So in 2013 it had done 67, 2014 it had done 69, then in 2016 it had done 73. Then in 2015, right in between those two dates, it had done 59, which can't be right. So what I'm guessing is that's an oversight. But well, this rain's atrocious, isn't it? What I'm guessing is then that this has been an oversight by an MOT tester. Why would you clock a car for 10,000 miles, it, especially a car like that? This doesn't really make sense. Should have brought my umbrella, shouldn't I? Well, let's go and have a look around it then, shall we? This might be quite a quick look, looking at this weather. Okay then. Now the rain's stopped. Have a quick look around it. So from this side, it's quite tidy. We've got a fairly decent tyre there. I mean, in terms of tread depth, not brand, it's a Delante. Fairly tidy down the body here. Indicates in the mirrors. Oh, it's a leather, it's got a leather interior. That's good. We've got a matching Delante on this side with, again, five or six mil of tread. 
not much rust around the wheel arch there, so that's a good sign. Japanese cars of this age always seem to rust. Good colour as well, isn't it? Bit of damage here, flaking paint here. It's the 1.6. That's a local car, because it's come from Richmond, Richmond car sales. The worst bit then, really, is down here. Try and keep my shadow out of it. So we've got damage to the rear door. A lot of that would buff back, actually. But then there's damage here on this wheel arch. But on a car of this value, it's not really worth sorting, is it? On this side, we've got a Imperial with about 5mm of tread on. And then on the front, we've got another Max Max Trek. Not sure what that is. Again, not too bad. And on the front, we've got a scuff here. That's not bad, though. I was expecting that to be worse from the front. Like I said, the fact it was driven in rather than reversed in made me think they were hiding something. It needs a good clean. Oh, it's got sunroof as well. I forget now, but is this called an exec? Might be an executive. Remote locking works. Well, this is clean. Very clean. We've got leather interior. Oh, look at that, heated seats. Heated seats, leather interior, sunroof. There's loads of room in the back of these Civics. Loads of room. Visibility is really good as well. Look at the door bins as well. Really sensible car, these, which is probably why they're not very desirable. Got storage down here. This is what I like to see. I'm guessing this is service history. So somebody's looked after this. So, two keys, MOT, I mean, this is old now, isn't it? So three owners, so it's probably four owners now. Miles 77, serviced, 13, 27, 39, 69, 76. Cam belt done at 69. Oh, it is an executive, 1.6 VTEC. Executive five door, and then in there we've got previous MOTs, some receipts. That's all pretty good, then, isn't it? Yeah, Trevor Burgess, Volvo. Used them plenty of times. Oh, well, that's all pretty good, isn't it? In there we've got a laminated. Someone's printed off the instructions for how to set the clock. Let's play a little game then. Let's try and work out how old the previous owner was. So we've got all the clues here, haven't we? We've got a Honda Civic, so instantly they're 50 plus. Then we've got the documented service history here, which tells me that they've got quite a lot of time on the hands. So they're obviously retired. So we'll say maybe 55 plus. Then we've got these laminated cards here, or instructions, which again are laminated on a home laminator. So I think we'll add another five years to that. So what are we up to? 60. Then we've got this tire pressure gauge here. Add another five years to that. So we're, we're at 65 now. Let's look at the radio station. With such ah, a radio three. Season. So I think we can add another five years to that. So we're at 65, 70. I think that's a fair, fair estimate, isn't it? Oh, manual gearbox. I think we can add 10 years for that. I've noticed lots of old people don't really trust autos. Am I not having an automatic, me? You can't bump start it when it goes flat. Okay, pal. How many times does that happen a year? So I think we can safely say the previous owner of this was about 87. There we go, I'm going with 87. Same as the mileage, actually. What do we think? Let me know below. Before I start it, let me check under the bonnet. bit of a scratch there on the wing that I can get my nail into so it won't buff out and the front there is oh no that'll clean up I thought it looked like it was peppered in stone chips but it's just dirt well it doesn't look like a complete rust bucket this does it normally those top mounts there are all corroded they're not too bad the old Honda VTEC engine which is probably a bit of an oil burner but will be reliable if you keep your eye on the levels Speaking of levels, let's check the colour of this oil. 
Hmm, could do with a change. I'd say that's been about 10,000 miles since that's been changed. A bit dirty looking, isn't it? A replacement battery at some point. These lenses could do with a clean. Honda of the UK, manufacturing. Were these built in Swindon? Was it Swindon? Well, should we drive it then? I think the proof will be in the pudding, won't it? So to speak. It started on the key, obviously. Well, if this has got a long MOT, I think there's a little bit of profit in this. I think I'll give it a good clean. Let's get oil on my jumper. Give it a good clean, buff up that rear door, maybe buff up the headlamps. Brakes were locked on them, but. Brakes are grinding as well, actually. Then we have had a bit of rain, so there'll be a bit of rust on them. See if they free off. They are loud, aren't they? quite like the positioning of the gear lever on these Civics. It's up high. Well, it feels like quite a nippy little car, this. Based purely on the laminated instruction card to set the clock, I'm guessing this car has never been driven in anger. I think off memory, these had quite a short cam belt interval. I think they were due every, every five years. This is one of those cars that I'm asked for all the time. Uh, Matt, you haven't got any cheap part exchanges, have you? So-and-so's just passed the test, or so-and-so's just had the car written off. It always happens. And usually I don't like to sell cars like that because it just always ends in tears. But with something like this, you shouldn't have too much of a headache. My heated seat's warming up. A nice feature. That engine sounds as sweet as a nut. Let's try the air conditioning. Changes gear nicely, the clutch feels good. Hmm. So the air conditioning works there. Put it back on heat, it's a bit of a chilly day today. Well now the brakes have freed off, they're not grinding anymore, so I think they're okay. I think what I'll do with this is run it down to my mechanics and get them to do an oil and filter change, and just throw their eye over it, make sure it's not unsafe. That's strange. I've now set the thermostat to hot, and it isn't getting hot. I'm disappointed. It can't be a head gasket, can it, on something like this? It might be a dodgy thermostat or something, actually. I'll have to get them to check that out as well. Well, that's a shame. It's the only fault that it's got, this. Windows work. Steering wheel feels quite nice. Nice leather steering wheel. There's loads of room in this. If we weren't such car snobs in this country, this is the kind of car that you could keep for another 10 years. It'll just run and run and run. It's very clean as well, somebody's taken pride with this. They might have shaken the mats out and thrown a bucket of water over it before parts exchanging it, which is what any sane person would do, but most people don't. The only slight issue with Japanese cars from this era, they're usually only a five speed, which means that the motorway at 70 or 80 miles an hour, you're doing like 4,000 RPM. What a pleasant little car this is. I would expect the way the used car market is right now, if I can sort that heater issue out, give it a bit of a clean up, this might be worth 1,500 pounds maybe. In which case, if I can keep my spend down to two or three hundred, there'll be six or 700 pounds profit in it, which isn't to be sniffed at, is it right now? Right, I think what I'll do then is run it to my mechanics first and get them to check it over, make sure it hasn't blown its head gasket. I'd be very surprised if it had. You know, when you consider that I recently paid £700 for an old Beetle that was a bit, uh, a bit buggered, this seems like the bargain of the century. Right, I shall catch up with you in a few days, hopefully with good news. Do you remember this car? You last saw it three months ago. It's just been one of those projects that's dragged on and on. Not because it needed a lot of work, it's just everybody I use is always busy and I kept pushing it to the back of the queue each time. Anyway, it's now done and I think it looks really good. 
The first thing I did was run it down to my mechanics for a service, a general check over, to investigate why the heater wasn't blowing hot. It was blowing out air fine, but it was only cold, it'd never get hot. So I thought perhaps it'd be something simple like a thermostat. It could have also been a heater matrix or possibly a head gasket. That's one of the symptoms of a blown gasket too. But that isn't a common issue on this car. It sat down at my mechanics for weeks because I kept bringing fresh cars and just pushing this to the back of the queue. That's the trouble, whenever I get a car, if it sells right away, then I rush that down there for prep. And sometimes that's at the expense of one of my project cars. Anyway, they did the service and the check over and it was all fine. And the heater turned out to be a, a sticking switch. They stripped it all down and it turned out it was just stuck on the cold position. So they lubricated it, played around with it a bit. And now, thankfully, it is working like a charm. I'm really grateful for that because it's currently minus two here today and I'm sat here nice and toasty. Then I took it to my body shop and because of its age, I didn't want to start spending hundreds and hundreds of pounds painting panels. Instead, what I asked for was a full buff, headlamp buff, and some careful touch-ins in the correct color. And I now think it looks really good. I mean, if you look closely, you can still see the damage, but from a distance, it looks pretty good. Especially when you remember this is an 18 year old car. Then I took it to the Valitas for a full detail clean and it cleaned up really well. I mean, the interior was always quite clean, but it got quite dusty. And now I think it's quite like a new pin. They really were built to last these cars. This and the equivalent era Toyota Corolla, which I've just bought actually, 2003 I think it was, with only 53,000 miles on the clock. They're just really sturdy, really solid workhorses. I got it back to work yesterday, took some photographs of it and advertised it. Then I realized it was June MOT, well, it wasn't June MOT, the current MOT runs out in June or July. Now when I bought it back in September, that was acceptable, but now of course we're in January. So I thought I need to run it through a fresh one. So I took it down to my mechanics this morning and it sailed through. Which means it's now got 12 months MOT without a single advisor item and it's just had a minor service. So it's all ready for its new home. Now I advertise this at £1,995. And straight away I got two phone calls on it. Cheap cars like this always sell. One of those inquiries came good so he's left a deposit and he's picking it up on Saturday. My colleague sent him loads of photographs of the bodywork so he knew exactly what he was buying. And he said, well, I live in central London, I just want a reliable runaround. I'm not really bothered about the bodywork. So I thought, well, that's the perfect person to buy this car. He knows exactly what he's buying. He's buying an 18 year old car. Mechanically, it runs like a Swiss watch. Whoa, it's really foggy up here today. I feel like Kate Bush. Let me find somewhere to park and I'll talk you through my costs and my profit. I'll be glad when I've parked this back up. I'm not superstitious or anything, but it is bad luck to drive a sold car. Right, here we'll do. Okay, so the car was 500 pounds. My first bill was with the mechanics, that was 159 pounds 13. So it had a minor service and uh, rectify the heater issue. Then the next bill was paint or paint work at the body shop. Didn't actually have any paint work, but the buff, the headlamp buff and the touch-ins, that cost me 165 pounds. The valet was 50 pounds and the MOT was £40. That takes my total spend to 50 plus 40 plus 165 plus 159 plus the £500 for the car, 914 pounds, 13 pence. I've sold it for £1,995, so take off the 91413 for the cost of the car plus the prep. Oh, then we've got the VAT as well. Now the VAT is the, the VAT on the margin between 1095 and the £500 purchase price. So that's a 20% of that margin, which is about 250 quid, isn't it? So take the 250 quid off, my total profit is 830 pounds. Just double check that, I think that's right. 830 quid. That's not bad, is it? Quite happy with that. As a percentage of the initial investment, that's really good actually. So 813 pounds total profit, and we've got a, another car here that will live to fight another day. I genuinely enjoy driving this Civic, you know. Just got an awful lot going for it. The seats are comfortable, there's loads of legroom in the back, the boots are good size, visibility is perfect, the steering wheel feels nice, I like the location of the gear lever. It's just really easy to drive. If I had no interest in cars and I just wanted to run around, I'd have something like this. Especially the exact model with heated leather seats and aircon on a sunroof. It's all the car you need, really. They're really good cars, these. And because of its low value, it means you can park it anywhere and you're not bothered about coming back to a key scratch or a door ding. Well, I think that's about it. So thank you once again for watching. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done already. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I'll leave the link below. If you're interested in getting into the used car business, then check out my course. 
I've created an online portal with nearly 100 videos which explain every single aspect of the used motor trade. From funding, branding, sourcing cars, preparing cars for sale, it's all there, so do check it out. And it's free for the first 30 days, and only £27 a month thereafter. So yeah, check it out. Cheers guys, see you next time.